Mr. Michael McKenna. What's up, baby? What's up, Corey? How you doing, man? I'm good. How's this? How's this look? Oh, man, right? you look like a million bucks, brother. If you have an Instagram influencer vibe to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> if I tag you on there, baby, we might be rich here soon. You doing good today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Dude, I love the backdrop. I was look, telling Austin, man, that teddy bear back there. That's a, is that the, is that the company uh, mascot? That's the mascot, man. Yeah, that's, uh, God, how old is that? When they launched, I mean, the, the franchise is now, I guess, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. When they lost in this, when they launched in the South, they had some of these folks couldn't say why Kurt didn't, <laughs> didn't understand what it was. So they created this bear and they named him Kurt, K-U-R-T. And started walking around town with big signs with the sign Y, W H Y, Y Kurt. And it took. So went ahead and got a fourteen hundred dollar mascot costume and <laughs> walked with Susan G. Komen, five Ks, did stuff for all sorts of events. It was pretty cool. That's fantastic. So, so you so you did you have like the Apple Watch to get all those steps in back then to be able to <laughs> you got about fifteen miles in that puppy? I think I think back then it was the Fitbit. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. I was big um, on the Fitbit game. That see, that was anyway. I was one of those guys in the South that could barely pronounce it. So I'm just gonna go with Kurt just to be safe. Uh, yeah, the white Kurt. Perfect, man. How's yeah. your day going like, thus far? Good, good. Had a workshop that we do on Wednesdays with a couple of associates. It's busy market, so you know having everybody in the office at times is is challenging. I but, bet, I bet it's it's uh, a yeah, weekly good. a weekly uh, training. Yeah, we just talk about what's happening with transactions, contracts. We do a lot with, you know, trying to get them past the threshold of video management and getting comfortable with the screen and the video and the recording and how to use a CRM and, and really how to tie it all together. You know, don't just post a video, but make sure you send it out to your contacts and share it and make sure people see it and those kinds of things. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, There's so much – we don't realize how much we are actually talking and are speaking. When we speak and we put a video in front of it, the ability to splice it and put it to your database, email yeah, it three I mean, times. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about you. Now, for people that I don't know, you have the real estate side of the business as well as the property management. So how does that look day to day? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit of, you know, cut your sandwich in fours, right? Eat a little bit of the time here, break your day up, focus on this. Sometimes you know, you get caught in the weeds and the whirlwind gathers your attention when you don't want it to be there. but it is. So yeah, we, we let's say 10 years ago started uh, a, a property management company inside of the real estate franchise. Now we have three full-time associates that really handle property management from business management, you know, landlord and tenant accounts, full-time leasing, uh, and then also uh, full-time maintenance coordination and property management or a property manager, if you will. Fantastic. So what kind of caused that need? So 10 years ago, you said is when the, the property management division started. Were you just seeing like you're selling left and right and you're like, you're seeing that need. People are continuing to ask like, hey, do you guys know anybody that can manage this house that I'm trying to make, maybe make an investment? Is that kind of how it played out? Or? Yeah, well, that was part of it. I mean, we, my business partner and I, we've been together as business partners now, I guess, close to 20 years. Went to college together, actually went to grade school together. So we've known each other for a long while. But about that 10 year mark, we started to or really look at what what the market was doing, the landscape of the market. We were getting those calls to say, hey, do you guys know anybody or do you service property management? And we had been investors in the college space for a little bit. We had some college rentals. I don't recommend that for anyone that's <laughs> not really prepared to get into that space. But but David, like I said, my business partner, he he, he saw this opportunity and, and we launched this concept inside the brokerage of listings in the bank. Love it. So if your clients weren't ready to sell at the moment, but they had the wherewithal to move on to the next property, we would manage this property for our agents and then when they were ready to sell, turn it right back over. And they had a listing in the bank for one, two, three, sometimes seven, eight years. So that's where property management really came into play. But for those that don't know, it's it's really an opportunity for a cash cow, mm -hmm. right? It's the cash flowing when the market's not really producing the sales that you want. And while it does create that you know need to have maintenance and oversight, it doesn't require a lot. I say this a lot. It, property management is very easy to do right. Yeah. It's also very easy to do wrong. Yep. I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah, no, I I give the credit to my business partner. He 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 had this idea like, look, we're not always going to be hot and heavy with listings and buyers. The market's going to go up and down and like now we're experiencing a, a crazy seller's market. I'm sure many of us are dealing with it. But we've had this property management unit where we've we've managed anywhere from 
you know, 50 units to 139, 140 individually owned residential units that, that really helps keep the, the cash flow and, and manage your, you know, your business uh, a little bit easier. That's fantastic. I, I think something that you noted in the very beginning was your business partner, David, you guys have had a relationship for, you said, plus 20 years now, maybe even stemming from college relationships and maybe yeah, a little yeah. time. I mean, it's, you know, I guess middle school to high school. Yeah. From there, that are, yeah, organically really play out into the business side. Say that again. Did it like organic, like how did that relationship kind of like cultivate for you guys? Like, was there one day over beers at like happy hour and senior year? You're like, you know, we kind of got a, a lot well, of, I don't know. I don't know not to bring in a higher power or whatever, but something in the universe said these two guys need to, you know, kind of yin and yang it out, right? That there's, there's a good healthy competition between the two of us, yep. but it's, it's, it's not egregious. It's, it's not anything that is adversarial. You know, he does great. It makes my day that much better. I do well, it, you know, lifts him up a little bit. So it just, it just kind of spun from being in close proximity. It, it honestly started, there was a, a pledging event yeah. and I said, Hey man, we're going out to grab some pizza and some beers. You want to partake? Right. Cause I went down to his dorm. I said, Hey, you know, we knew each other, in a large environment, brand new, didn't know a lot of folks. Yep. It was a familiar face, familiar voice. I said, Hey, they got pizza and beer. You want to go? Who doesn't want free pizza and beer? Yep. Um, and then from there, it just, you know, pledged together, lived together for a period of years, separated a bit after college. I graduated first and then, Moved down to Orlando way for a little bit, you know, kind of spread my wings, if you will. Came back up and he always had this idea. He's like, look, man, I'm thinking about getting in this real estate space. If you were the lender, I think we'd clean up. You're the numbers guy. You you have this knack for, you know, crossing T's, dot and I's. Mm -hmm. uh, we clean up. And, and that never really materialized. But the real estate thing, you know, the, the opportunity presented itself. And it was just, you know, as soon as I got my license, he and I were on, on the ground running full speed ahead, no stopping. Yeah, that's your story kind of reminds me of Austin and I, our, my business partner. Similar, like we went to high school together, didn't necessarily have like a close relationship. It wasn't until we went to college, he and I went, we shared some classes down here in Orlando. We have a University of Central Florida and we had a couple classes together. It was junior year. He asked me to come over to study. We pretty much, you know, do the thing where you, you have the quizzes online and you go through the textbook, you cheat together, stuff like that. Hopefully the college never sure, sees sure. that, but, but it formed, <laughs> it formed an organic relationship yeah. to where, you know, kind of like you said, like a higher power, you feel the, the connectivity, you feel the synergy. And we have kind of that healthy boundary of competition. Like you said, like there'd be days where I do feel like I'm, you know, hundred percent getting after it, but then I see this guy busting it, you know, 120, 150. I'm like, Holy mm -hmm. shit. I, I, it makes you kind of almost, you know, question yourself if like, am I still doing enough? You know, so I think that healthy, that healthy boundary right there that allows you both to elevate. I would imagine it's probably similar, similar when people tell sports stories of like Kobe Bryant, the Mamba mentality of like, he's oh, the sure. guy working out in that gym at 9 PM. Like that motivates other people to like, maybe I don't, maybe I shouldn't dip out right when practice ends. It's that, right. it's that leadership skills that innately kind of can level you up. No question. A lot to be Absolutely. said there. So kind of like what, as as the 20 years have kind of come and gone, and I, I don't say that to make it sound old, but you got a lot of professional sure. skills that you've been able to notch under your belt. How do you continue to kind of stay in that curiosity mindset and still feel like you can innovate and maybe push that ledge a little bit further to be to have these new opportunities? Great question. And uh, just to kind of go backwards a bit to answer the, the, the guy behind me. Yep. You know, this Kurt, as I said, we are yin and yang, David and I, right? And we have some really core group of employees and, and now friends, actually family members that work within the company as well. And true DNA matches. That's uh, the true testament. But <laughs> we bought this figure with the idea that I was going to be using Kurt as a mechanism to brand and, and market ourselves in our certain communities. And David said from the jump, I I'm not getting in, Kurt. That's not me. It's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. Yep. I'll be next to you. I'm not into dancing bear. Right? <laughs> yep. So that in itself is where kind of he and I learned, you know, separate. We don't always need to be in the same room. There's an absolute trust that's happening from him being in the same room or this, you know, the, the, the listing or landlord listing opportunity. That's a technology that we're faced with. I mean, he and I, in, in most of our career, have been the youngest business owners in the room up until like this point right now. Yep. We're both at that. His birthday is this week coming up. 
we're at that 45 mark, right? We've been doing this for about, I, I've been doing it 19 years. He's been doing it 24 years. That's incredible. Right? So from an investment perspective, the, the challenge was always there to stay ahead of the other investors and to be agile in the marketplace. I mean, we did have quite a bit when the, our business was at its largest scale. We had, you know, three offices. We had uh, close to 100 associates. We've gone through over 300 agents in, in the time of being a brokerage, we found the ones that work with us and the ones that didn't. And, you know, we've really found our way with a core group of agents that are absolutely fantastic. They're good to break bread with, you know, trustworthy, loyal. They scratch my back, we scratch theirs. And the staff that we have, the same kind of thing is we work together now I think our, our, our least tenured staff is seven years. Wow. Our longest tenured staff is almost 19. Wow. I mean, they've been with us from the jump and we've gone through trials and tribulations and growth and, you know, decline and maintain, you know, this business of ours and, and good standing for, for 19 years. So it's That's really about the longevity and, and the consistency of really good quality folks. And you've heard this a hundred times over, right? You're only as good as those that you surround yourself with. I might be the one that's in the dancing bear costume, but my team <laughs> makes all this happen. Yep. It's, it's not just me. And I watched one of the other videos that, that, that you had interviewed, buddy of ours in common, Charles. Yep. You know, it, it, I kind of had the same disease. I would meddle in everything. I have this similar idea of if I'm idle, something's wrong, right? So I've got to keep busy, got to stay into it, got to keep my hands moving. And sometimes that, that, that hand moving is getting in the way of my staff being productive and I, I'm a distraction. I know I am. And it's taken a while to grasp that, but I've learned to get out of their way, stay out of their mojo and, and see where I can just maintain that. Look, I'm right behind you. If you need some help, let me know and we'll keep trucking. I love that, man. And I, I, I would want to attest to that because that's something that me and Austin and Tyler have gone through a little bit here lately is as we've kind of been able to grow the team, we're only like three and a half, four years old now, you know, we're kind of getting out to that spot where we have a team around us and we try to, ha we have that inability to sometimes try to put our hands in the pot a little too much. And I think we've been doing a good job of trying to back up and let the team like, Hey, we understand, we trust you. But I think the other side for us, probably you may, may be able to attest to this is sometimes you're like, well, if I don't at least try to think about it a little bit, am I going to almost forget how to use that skill? Or am I going to, Remember it if right. I do need to have be pulled on. So that's like the other side that I'm always trying to play that healthy balance. Like I want to be here to be able to coach and hop in when it needed somebody's on vacation or, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's always the other little thing that I'm always trying to, what's the healthy balance. That's always something that it's a little difficult. Yeah. And something else that it's not mine, it's not original. And we've all kind of either read it in a book or, or read it in a blog or a vlog or heard it a thousand times. If you want to go fast, go alone. Yep. You want to go far, but yeah, I've I've learned a little bit of that the hard way. Is I've I've, I've commingled my ideas with my team to the point where they never got anything done because I was just a constant distraction, right? And we have this new thing now. It's a mantra in the office: ideas are shit. Excuse me. No, um, you're good. Execution is king, right? I mean, just everything. I, I, ideas are great, but if you don't execute on them, there's there, there's nothing there. You know, and, and some of my team members, the agents that, that we, we call partners now are really starting to pick up on that. And like, I've got a thousand ideas, but if I only execute on two of them, you, you know, how do I know which one's going to be the best or which one's going to work? But yeah, I, I try and stay out and it's, it's still hard because of your point you mentioned is I, I'm afraid of losing that skill or that asset. I have absolute trust in my team and they know it. They hear me say it all the time. And it's, it's kind of a reinforcement for them too. Fantastic. Now. You, you mentioned you had some of the staff almost there for highly tendered at 19 years. Would you put, this is hard to maybe even materialize, but is there like anything that you feel that you've been able to do day in, day out, month to month that may have been able to attribute to that culture that is so trustworthy? And like I'm sure you love coming to work because you don't want to let these people down, but it's also a testament to say like, man, they're staying for 19 years. Do you attest anything in particular that may have stemmed from that? I think it's, it's being honest and transparent. You know, I don't always make the right decisions. I don't make the best decisions, but we learn and grow together. They have some feedback and in, in pretty much every decision, maybe to, you know, the detriment of the company in the moment, mm -hmm. in the microchasm, right? But in the long haul, if you keep plugging away, 
I think if you give them the opportunity to have some ideas and really have some some teeth into you know what you're working with, they create that ownership themselves. And it makes them get up in the morning, come to work with a positive attitude. They want to stay a little bit longer to finish what they're working on. We have a drive right now, and it's not new, but the Google review phenomenon, right? Is we're actively going after customers and clients that we serviced almost 10 years ago. Be like, hey, you know, we got this new platform. Maybe you've heard of it, Google. <laughs> really love just for you to share that experience. I know it was a long time ago, but if you could just say a few words, that in and of itself is a reward. And my longest tenured employee, we had this turn of phrase, I guess it was about four or five years ago, where she has a VP ship within the company. She's a, she's our vice president. She makes business decisions with and without David uh, or myself involved. Mm -hmm. um, very comfortable in that space. But I, I said, look, I said, you're my success manager. You are my success manager. We will live and die by your success and she has owned it. She has really taken it by stride. Our agents have fallen in line with that and adopted that role, that, that idea that I had. She's our success manager. What does that mean? Anything you want it to be in the world of success. How can we help you get to that success level that maybe you weren't there or you want to be here? You got me fired up, brother. I feel like you just gave me a locker room <laughs> talk. Like I'm about to bust the doors open and go play in front of Lambo. Uh, <laughs> I'm still on a high from last night. I coached my son's little league baseball team. We had our first game last night where the Cardinals go St. Louis. Let's go. Uh, but, dude, I'm at my happiest place when I'm on a baseball field. I played for a long time. It, it d didn't make it up to college levels or anything like that, but I, I love this. So I'm still, I'm still jazzed up from last night, man, coaching those kids and being excited about it. One, two, three, Cardinals! You know, those kind of things. Those kind of things get me going, man. I, I've been in sports a long time. I coach Little League uh, girls basketball, baseball. Yeah, I, I, times. I, I did a little coaching myself last year. I have a buddy that is, is aspiring to be a head ball coach for a basketball team. So we were helping out at the local YMCA and – it's the, I played basketball. You can't tell in this video, but I'm only like five nine, so the frame <laughs> the frame isn't quite there. But nonetheless, I did enjoy. I see that video, man, when you had some ups. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that shot. I saw that shot. I could I could jump a little bit, but now now I'm in physical therapy for the knee. You know, so it's all it's all of a, a back in the day. But I do truly enjoy being around the young, the youth, because they have such like they just yearning to know that they're they're learning. They're so curious. And us to be able to, you know, a lot of the things they were talking about today is stuff that probably we learned through sports that we now have translated into the business work, work today life. So it's always fun to bring it back full circle and teach them the things we may have learned as a professional. You know what I learned? That's a really great point. You know what I learned last night that I appreciate what you just said, brought it back full circle is when I'm teaching these kids, the fundamentals of baseball, their memory is this long. It's so short, yep. right? They muff a ground ball or they swing through a perfect strike. They're back at it. Yep. They're ready to go. Give me another one, coach. Give me another one, coach. And these kids are six and eight years old. Their parents are on the sidelines. So I've got eyes looking at us the whole time. And I take that into our profession now. Like I've been in sales since I was 15. Mm -hmm. Give me another one, coach. Memory is, is really short. I'm not worried about yesterday's failures or what's going on. I'm not going to let it weigh me down way, way too much to where I can't get up and keep going. Right. But that's a great point. The youth, man, they, their memory is short. They want to keep going. They want to learn. Give me all you got. It's everything, man. Like I, I, I feel it in business as well. Like sometimes we be going, we'll go through a certain scenario and maybe you get a rejection, especially in sales. Somebody, oh, your price is too high or you guys are not doing your job properly. But I mean, whatever it may be, it's easy for us as adults to be like, you know, down in the dumps. But it's, for some, I don't know where that line kind of started where we started like kind of questioning ourselves but as kids it's it's we have it i think it's just through the culture you get taught to maybe not trust in yourself so that's something that we got to break through within coaching and consulting to just be like listen just keep swinging the bat making no more calls understand that that's you're it. not loved by everyone but that's not necessarily yeah. the goal either you got to find your community you got to find your tribe yeah absolutely what would you consider your superpower charles brought that up to me on a previous episode where he i really liked how he positioned he's like he was out on panel one time and somebody asked him, you know, we're always taught to be humble, kind of going back to the culture. But he's like, pick right. something that you feel you're really good at. Do you have something that you feel like, man, that is my thing? And it's allowed me to maybe see some success in some other avenues. Yeah, I, I, I guess you could create this as, as a superpower. But I, 
I try not to dwell or I haven't dwelled on failures much. You know, you make a decision, something goes wrong, you're agile enough to pivot right, pivot left, keep going. I have been known to make decisions quick and as we go, you know, modify that decision to make it work for them. Another thing that is, is nothing is is too serious. Like I'm I'm always upbeat, try to be motivated. It's very hard in in my space for my people that I'm working with to ever see me in a down spot. I try to be as 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 positive mannered and professional, be endearing to those that you're working around. Be cognizant that, you know, not everybody is as, as crazy high as you. Right? Yep. Um, but another life experience is that our, our morning bus stop, there's a group of parents that I'm very close with because they're in my neighborhood, right? They're in my tribe. So every morning I show up with my two kids, we're at the bus stop because we're at the elementary age and there's a bunch of, but I mean, I'm, I'm fired up, ready to go. And it's eight o'clock in the morning, got a cup of coffee in me. And it's like, all right, guys, what are we doing today? We're dominating. Yeah. Right. And one of my neighbors is like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not ready to dominate today. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not ready to dominate today. <laughs> and it, it just, it's bringing that to the table every day, trying to not be so serious you know, we're not doing life altering surgeries. We're not p putting people in the space, staying motivated on a, you know, a level playing field, I think is, is what some would call my superpower. Yeah. It sounds like you have that infectious energy that when you walk into that room at, I guess it was 8am at the bus stop, parents are probably like barely have had a cup of coffee, you yeah. know, half asleep. And they're probably like, this guy is on something, man. This guy has yeah. the energy, but it, what's, what's in his coffee. Yeah. yeah. What's he do yeah. that makes him so happy? And then it makes them ask the questions which is that that's an absolutely a fantastic superpower. Something that I think with everybody, if you're around you, especially in the moments where they're maybe they, they don't have the confidence they might not have that, that they need to have in that day, they get around you, yeah. they know they're going to get it. They're going to get it from somewhere. Energy is infectious. Yeah. Like if I know that a handshake isn't enough, we're, we're bringing it in for a bear hug. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Right. If, if the handshake's not enough or the high five isn't enough, come on, bring it in. Let's, Let's get, get it. That vibe going. It, it, Let's get it. It stems right back to the ball fields. Like you have the huddles, you have the, the prep right. talks in the beginning of it, like there's a reason teams do that. You know, we need to make that more of a standard in the office practice, you know, in anything that we do. So yeah. You guys have any, like, how do you guys, do you guys do anything within like a social events or, or maybe like something like, I know we kind of gone to the zoom era, but I don't know if that's starting to re release a little bit. Yeah, no, we're getting back into really focusing on our client appreciation outdoor at the parks because where we are, we have countless areas where we can get into a pavilion, a couple grills, we can have an event. So we have one scheduled for middle of summer, but our team has happy hours and gatherings on a you know quarterly basis. Just to kind of put the office aside for a minute. Let's get together, you know, shoot the breeze, see what's going on, break some bread and and really start to build those relationships. You know, in my world, my client isn't just a buyer and seller. My agents are my clients. And if mm -hmm. I'm not performing at levels to make them continue to be interested in what we're doing or to continue to, you know, fight for the cause, they're going to go somewhere else. And that, that doesn't work for me. I love it, man. I, I noticed you've used the word break, break bread with them a handful of times today. And I think that's so powerful and the ability that we get, we get caught up on the eight to five, you know, emails, phone calls. Hey, did you do this? Did you do that? You can't really form relationships there under stressful moments. So that's something that we've been really trying to be mindful and cognizant of is trying to put ourselves in some form of social event to where it is just casually breaking bread. It's the small jokes. It's you listen to Britney Spears on the way in. I do too type of stuff. <laughs> they were roasting me yesterday at the table about that. So uh, it's the small, funny little banter that I think is what cultivates a good culture. And then everybody being light on your feet. Like you said, we're not doing these crazy surgeries, these end all be alls. We're here to help somebody with a service and a product. And we're right. going to do everything we can to do that. And let's have fun while we do it. It's just kind of the standard that, I think we want to continue to set and hope we can continue to do it, but you got to take the pressure out of the situations. I noticed we just yeah, got back from a Tom Ferry conference this past week and kind of the same scenario. This was more so of a networking event for us where the conference was typically your traditional eight to five, but Austin, myself, we had Hunter, the sales team. We were, we made it sure from six to 10, six to 11 happy hour hour. That's when, that's when we made our most genuine relationships. Like that's because we were just casually talking. Music's, you know, music's on, listening to some Jimmy Buffett. People are talking about where they're from. We met some uh, people out from Salt Lake City, completely different culture than where we're at here in South Florida. So it was fun to just kind of shoot the breeze. And then it just natively and organically forms yep. into something else. And then it's just, it's, it's not as stuffy as it once was.
Yeah, I mean, you've been to enough of these conferences and these trade shows, if you will, right? The, the trade show isn't in the auditorium with a thousand seats and the speaker on the stage. The trade show is in the hallways after that's done or before that's done where the real rubber meets the road and the relationships are, are created, you know, fostered and matured in those hallways. It's the cup of coffee that maybe isn't Starbucks that's being provided by the, you know, by the venue where you have that giggle, like this coffee sucks. But, <laughs> yes. You know, part of the, part of the program, those kinds of things. That's exactly right. It's, it's the organic and the native outside the event, but inside the venue of, of where you are. And, and that's, I mean, I, I'm in a national franchise. We've got companies all up and down the East coast, West coast in the middle. I've created tremendous relationships in these conferences that we have. And I, I wasn't sitting in an auditorium. There was a breakout session of 50 to 300 people. I was in the hallway. I missed the entire session. I was in the hallway learning more about somebody from, you know, from Tennessee or from Texas, you know, to where, where I flew my wife down to Dallas. We were in Texas and I had private sessions with another broker owner. He came out of his way to just show us around yeah. Dallas. It was awesome. That's the stuff that matters. Shows that you're, they show your heart, you know, they show their heart, they show that they actually care. And then that's, and we're going to mainly just reciprocate that in some other way because we care, not even yep. in an ul ulterior motive type of way. So I yeah. love it, man. Um, I really appreciate you hopping on today. I, I know um, you're a busy man and I know you've got the two companies there and I know you're getting pulled in every direction, but I only had one last question for you. No, yeah, please. Happy to be here. Man. Yes, you know sir. That. If you could give advice to your younger self. Maybe a 17 year old man's going through that fraternity for free pizza. You just met right. David. What would it be to put you to the next level of where you want to go in life? Pay closer attention to your circle, to your tribe, to your mm. community. Fantastic. Fantastic. Pay closer attention to your, as we call it in our business, in your business, our SOI, right? Our sphere of influence, your past clients. Pay closer attention. We work our tail off to win one client. And then in the moment after the transaction, from a naive perspective or just getting lost in the weeds of the next deal, you forget to continue to foster that relationship. And I've been lucky, knock on the wood, I've been lucky to where I have a handful of clients that no matter what happens in the world of real estate, they refer me and my company. And I can only imagine that if I paid closer attention to the hundreds of clients that we had in the beginning mm -hmm. where my business would be today. Yep. Fantastic. And you know what now, now that you know that, and I'm sure you've realized that for many years now, you know how to double down on it. So it's, I, I'm double down in, but what's frustrating in the moment is I'm having to play catch up. Yeah. Right. Because I got into the world of being a, you know, the, the, the broker and I forgot, you know, I wasn't practicing what I was preaching in the moment. And if, if I could do it all over again, paying much more closer attention to my past clients and my sphere of influence with, with, with a clear direction yeah. of where I wanted to go with it. Transactional versus transformational, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Well, M Michael McKenna, thank you so much, my brother. I really appreciate the time. I'm going to have to get me. You guys can send me a second teddy bear like that. I'm going to have to throw it next to the Jordan Belford back there. You uh, got it, bro. Thank you for I the time, it. brother. I can't wait to get to see you in person. Hopefully we can do that in the next six months. But hey, if I'm over in the Maryland area, you're my guy. So I'm going to be buying a house from you, it. baby. Appreciate your time, man. Have a Appreciate fantastic it. night, man. See you, Mike. See you guys. See you, buddy. Thanks, Corey.